Hi, welcome to Learn Stroke IAS classes by Arjun. You're listening to the Daily Hindu News Analysis and today the date is 2nd December 2022 and let's see one of the important news paper articles news leads of the day and uh, this was actually uh, perhaps yesterday's important business news so i thought i'll start up with this this is nothing but a mumbai based uh, uh, company has uh, trying to raise capital but apart from this company the most interesting thing that i really liked about which is an important topic for gs paper 3 environment especially new clean energy is a concept called bas what you mean by bas previously saas was very popular and that was also asked in the prelims 20 Uh, 22 paper uh, software as a service this is battery as a service which is going to be a revolution so what do you mean by battery as a service so you know that the electric vehicle or the electric vehicles or the e vehicles are going to be the biggest game changers in the coming years and battery as a service allows customers to lease battery separately from the vehicle so that it's basically a customer it allows the customer to lease batteries separately from the vehicle so that customers do not have to purchase the battery upfront with the vehicle so that can be a good thing that means uh, leasing of the battery from charging infrastructure company and uh, you know the, this leasing is office offered as a service like software as a service banking as a service infrastructure as a service it's something like battery as a service from a customer perspective bas is an asset light low cost and fast on its feet model which basically allows the customer to instantly swap the battery as opposed to you know going to a fixed charging station where a fixed charging battery is used and the time consuming for charging infrastructure cost is very intensive so when the bas model where the battery is leased and by the uh, cus- uh, customer it's actually leased by the customer what happened is the upfront cost of electronic vehicles or the electric vehicles will come down significantly for two wheelers so it's 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 a really good thing so that is something called battery as a service where you lease batteries separately from the vehicle so the customers do not have to purchase the battery so very important uh, for gs paper 3 environment and even clean energy it's very i thought i'll start the session with this one okay moving on to the next important news a lead is november gst revenue rises 11% from previous year gs paper 2 economy this time definitely gst revenues India's gross GST revenues has, uh, you know, ri- risen by 11% higher than a year ago. So revenues from imports of goods were 20% higher, while domestic transactions, including export, I mean import of services, uh, yielded 8% higher taxes. So definitely a uh, uh, good things. Uh, the collections have become much more better, is what you see. And there is something called as GST compensation cess. The compensation cess. uh the compensation says uh, do you know what do you mean by compensation says so this brings us to another important question what do you mean by compensation says and what is sgst cgst igst and utgst so the taxes under gst are basically all these taxes so what is a compensation says the uh, compensation says was actually created out of the gst compensation to states act 2017 was enacted to levy compensation cess for providing compensation to the states for the loss of revenue arising on account of implementation of gst so when the gst is implemented the states will incur a loss so such a loss should have been compensated and that compensative effort is due to the compensation compensation cess and uh, which is actually uh, on the uh, uh, the compensation cess will be collected on the supply of select goods and services till 1st july 2022 so uh, uh this is very important concept uh, you might get an uh, objective question also so what is compensation says and what is uh, sgst cgst so obviously you know that there is the uh, unlike earlier when before the gst came and there were multiple taxes like central excise tax state tax what uh, and gst uh, has replaced everything with uh all these things and that that that, that is reason why we have the cgst sgst and igst so sim- in simple terms cg uh, sgst simply means uh, state goods and service tax under gst an equivalent amount of sgst is taxed levied on intrastate supplies of both 
goods and services by the particular state government where the product is sold or consumed so it is actually talking about the uh, uh, intra state supplies so there there, there is an uh, sd st actually marking there so please read it from the perspective of gs paper 3 economy moving on to the important news item as pakistani terror groups now shifting base to afghanistan so this brings us to international relations gs paper 2 this brings us what is what should india how should india be more prepared so what is india's terror handling strategies that will be deployed you should know uh, taliban and afghanistan especially the uh, terrorist organization that are targeting india is always a big pressure for indian uh, foreign relations and indian uh, uh, defense so how are we going to be prepared on this front please do understand about this gs paper to international relations next is uh, border with myanmar still sealed manipur traders rule losses so this brings us to another big problem of the refugee crisis because you know that uh, 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 there is a big problem of uh, refugees coming through the uh, manipur and mizoram area so in this you should know the borders are closed so when you close the borders what happens is there is a, what is an international border what do you mean by an international border and uh, why are the borders closed when you close the borders the trade automatically gets affected so there is a big loss in the trade system and uh, you should know this also talks about uh, an important concept of assam rifles what is assam rifle assam rifle is a central paramilitary force responsible for border security uh, counter insurgency and uh, maintaining the law and order so they are basically a central paramilitary force and it guards the indo myanmar border the assam rifle guards the indo myanmar border and it is perhaps the oldest paramilitary force of india and it comes under the administration of ministry of home affairs while the operational control is maintained by the indian army so one part is by the ministry of home affairs and the other part is maintained by the indian army so no more about uh, assam rifles next is two leopards on the prowl on bangalore outskirts this brings us to an important area in gs paper 3 biodiversity especially the conservation of animals so this brings us automatically you have to know no more about leopard no more about leopard and what do you mean by a sites appendix and uh, in which category do you find the leopard because the uh, the panthera pardus is listed as vulnerable on the iucn list and uh, the indian leopard is considered vulnerable in india bhutan and nepal but it is critically endangered in pakistan so on the iucn uh, red list it is listed as vulnerable and you should know more about uh, tiger sorry it's leopard and uh, how, how, what is the difference between a leopard and a tiger and uh, what are the habitats what are the pressures that is actually uh, that the leopard is facing in india and uh, what are the important aspects regarding that as what do you mean by sites appendix so sites is nothing but convention on international trade in endangered species of wildlife fauna and flora it is also known as the washington convention so nothing but convention on international trade in endangered species of wildlife fauna and flora and it is a sites is a multilateral treaty to protect the endangered plants and animals not only uh, plant, animals it's also plants from the threat of international trade so it was drafted in 1963 at the uh, a meeting of the IUCN International Union for Conservation of Nature and the con- convention was open for signature in 1973 and it came the sites officially came into existence in 1975 so read it from the perspective of gs paper 3 uh, environment biodiversity conservation moving on the uh, important aspect the tamil nadu counters argument that animals like persons are protected by the constitution so gs paper 2 polity and governance this is a very interesting article because it asks the very basic questions are animals like individuals people protected under the constitution or uh, the tamil nadu government versus constitution bench of the supreme court hearing the jallikatt case has brought this thing into the the tamil nadu government versus the constitution bench of the supreme court has brought out this important aspect because uh, it has basically said that a duty to ensure the well being of an animal does not give the right to the animal to demand well being so uh, the basic question is are animals like people protected under the constitution or simply there is a directive that animals should be uh, just treated for their well being so and there is no concept of right of animal so basically tamil nadu government and supreme court are actually e- exchanging the uh, debate and uh, some say that the animals do not have any right what is your opinion the rights are given by human beings and the rights are of two kinds against the state 
or a fellow human beings and against the nature so there is one one rights is against for the human beings and then for the nature there is no concept of right of animals and uh, is it true uh, do you agree with this uh, these are some of the questions that you should have an idea should animals be protected under the constitution or just nature and and uh, human being should be done and animals protection only comes through some directives that they should be done so is there any uh, affirmative uh, protection under the constitution that we have to discuss please do think about this from gs paper to polity perspective next is uh, global factors to uh, enhance tourist exchange between kerala and russia so you know that uh, since the covid 19 the pandemic has come uh, a lot of tourism to kerala has uh, you know declined uh, and uh, one of the biggest people who come to kerala are the russian people who are almost 30000 to 50000 people come every year and uh, slowly uh, the problem the next uh, apart from kerala the next important ayurvedic destination was colombo in sri lanka since problems are happening in sri lanka uh, uh, kerala might be a big attractive destination for the people to come to uh, ayurvedic uh, treatments and tourism so gs paper to international relations perspective russia india relationship moving on to the important editorials mix it back despite uh, inflation credit conditions must remain supportive so this basically talks about uh, the important aspects regarding the latest gdp estimates which which has shown the economy's expansion decelerated in july september period so uh, what has created this and uh, we should know that the on the gva or what do you mean by gva we discussed it in the yesterday session what is gross value added and uh, the latest gdp estimate shows that the economy expansion has decelerated in the july september period and from the gva side only 3 of the 8 sectors have uh, shown a sign of uh, growth actually only 3 of the 8 sectors of agriculture like services of trade hotels transport and communication financial realty and professional services has seen some acceleration so the services of trade hotels transport communication financial realty professional services has seen an acceleration but apart from the other sectors like electricity gas water supply utility service construction has faced sequential decline so uh, so that is something that we have to know from this so basically talks about few things on indian economy gs paper 3 economy moving on to the next important one is the laying the ground to delegitimize the supreme court gs paper to indian polity and governance and this comes up with a very very important concept regarding the executive versus judiciary that means basically it is talking about the appointment of judges whether you need to have the collegium system what are the problems of collegium system and why is the supreme court versus union government what is the debate and how to break the deadlock is very important because uh collegium system is criticized uh, by the government and uh, the go- the sup- the judiciary wants the collegium system to act strongly so what is going to be the answer is very important in this article so read it from the perspective of gs paper 2 polity and governance moving on to another important article is regarding the uh, uh important concept called safer roads for a greener more sustainable environment so why why is this topic important so this actually talks about various concepts like uh, from 2021 uh, india has reported over lakhs of 4 lakhs around crashes which has impacted the environment and uh, whenever there is a crash happening most of the vehicles you know emit or release mercury cadmium uh, hexavalent chromium which are very uh, you know uh, problem for the environment and whenever there is an accident happening whenever there is a crash happening there is fuel and fluid leaks which is open spilled in the crash site so there is complete uh, road crashes lead to automobile wreckaging so that has created what is called a scrapage so there is a problem of scrapage here brings as the important question what is a fluid leakage what do you mean by scrapage and what is india's national automobile scrapage policy that is something very important and uh, what do you mean by voluntary vehicle fleet modernization program and what do you mean by the zero fatality corridor so india sir you know that whenever there is an accident a lot of fluid leakages like i have already discussed mercury cadmium other things cause damage to the environment and scrapage is a big time problem so that is why 
na- India's national automobile scrappage policy has come. India's vehicle scrappage policy envisages the creation of a scrapping infrastructure throughout the country. It is a good push towards introducing a circularity practices in the automotive industry. So, the 2021 August Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched the vehicle scrappage policy. Uh, this was introduced to reduce India's vehicular air pollution, uh, which the transport sector is contributing by phasing out old, unfit vehicles in an environmental friendly manner. So, rather than abrupt scrapping, it should be phased out in an environmental friendly manner. So, even though vehicle scrappage will be voluntary, the policy requires both private and commercial vehicles to undergo mandatory fitness test. And the uh, policy also, the scrappage policy also uh, asks for a creation of a scrapping infrastructure throughout the country. So, there brings in the important concept of voluntary vehicle fleet modernization program. What do you mean by that? The government plans to set up around 450 to 500 automated vehicle fitness center. So, uh, very importantly and then the article talks about the biggest factor for road crashing is speeding over speeding is a big reason why scrap i mean speeding the accident happens that is why zero fatality corridor is actually a tra- is a road traffic safety model relevant for low and middle income countries the model originated in india and was developed by indian non-profit save life foundation slf it aims to reduce the number of road crashes and consequence injuries and damages and fatalities so very important and the article also talks about asbestos what do you mean by asbestos asbestos which has created an adverse impact on the environment and uh, now one of the sustainable recycled materials which is suggested apart from the asbestos is aluminium composite panels or acp which are much more utilized for the signages so it discusses a lot of good things for gs paper 3 uh, environment and sustainable environment etc so no more about this and moving on to the next is Should there be a panel to appoint election commissioners? So again, this talks about the uh, election commissioners, uh, the appointment of election commission. How is the process and uh, should what is the government interference happening in the appointment of election commissioners? Should the government interfere in this? Should the election commission be an independent organization? All these are important. The government wants to have the complete control over the constitutional body, election commission, which is supposed to be independent of the government. So. What is the government interference? How is the election process needed? GS paper to polity governance. We have to have an idea on that. Next is G20 presidency and unparalleled crucial responsibility, says Jay Shankar. So this is not only, uh, uh, I'll give you a few questions for the mains. The India at the helm of the G20 need to steer inclusive, ambitious and action oriented transformations. Comment. This is a statement which Narendra Modi describes India's agenda at the G20. So, how is it going to be inclusive, ambitious and action oriented? So, this is not a development just from the perspective of diplomatic. So, it's much more than that. It's a crucial responsibility that is assumed at India in the time of world politics. And how will India do? We'll have to discuss it. So, get this question for international relations questions. And moving on to the next important will. Will Renew fight against what is wrong? Bilkis Banu. So, obviously... uh, uh, you should know Bilkis Banu case was discussed. What is Bilkis Banu case? How she was gang raped and how Gujarat, how she is responding against the Gujarat court's decision to prematurely release 11 convicts who are facing life sentence. So, she, what the Bilkis Banu case should be discussed. GS Paper 2, Polity Governance and GS Paper 1 Society. India condoles the death of former Chinese leader Yang Zemin. So, he was, it was already discussed yesterday. How uh, the famous Chinese leader uh, Jian Zemin's uh, period saw China's massive economic transformation and uh, how China became a superpower during his time was discussed. The Enforcement Directorate assets worth 82.77 crore linked to IAS officers. So this has bring us again a concept of what is called as Prevention of Money Laundering Act. What is Prevention of Money Laundering Act? And uh, the IAS officer is already involved in this. So this is also a GS paper for case study question. How a senior bureaucrat is often involved in a money laundering case. So how is that taken? And the prevention of money. Money laundering basically refers to the conversion or misrepresentation of money which has been illegally obtained by unlawful sources. And the PMLA, the Prevention of Money Laundering Act is applicable to all persons which include individuals, company, firm, partnership firm, association of person, incorporations and any agency 
office or branch owned or controlled by any of the above mentioned person so prevention of money laundering act is very important from gs paper 3 uh, black money and money laundering etc the next is no songs promotion promoting drugs center to fm radio channels so this has brought out two important concepts like uh, gs paper 3 role of media what is gopa and m gopa grant of permission agreement is gopa and the migration grant of permission agreement is m gopa so majority of the broadcasting firms the fm radio channels have uh, signed to this agreement of fairness equity that uh, there are set of rules which they have agreeing in terms of uh, recently the center has cautioned the fm channels to not play songs or broadcasting content glorifying alcohol drugs weaponry or even gangster and gun culture so if they do they they will actually violate the gopa the granted permission agreement so uh, this brings us to an important concept gopa and m gopa when you hear this thing it's uh, relating to the uh, uh, role of media and the uh, minister of information broadcasting moving on to the next is is there a compelling reason for gm mustard affect environment our supreme court this is again every day it comes in the newspaper so it brings out supreme court is asking the union government if there was a reason to press against gm mustard or genetically modified mustard or is indian agriculture or uh, uh, really wanting a genetically modified crops and uh, it also questions the geac or uh, the genetic engineering appraisal committee which has cleared the environmental release of dmh 11 a genetically modified version of mustard so what is gm mustard what is dmh has to be discussed and uh, what is gaac which is a statutory body so uh, india the supreme court is questioning do we do does india need gm mustard and if so what are the pros and cons of this gs paper 3 uh, the farming issue and uh, biotechnology moving to center to cut funds if land is not allotted for housing schemes so this is very important gs paper 2 government schemes which is said that uh, the center the, the article talks about very important pradhan mantri gramin avas yojana or pma yg the states which are unable to provide lands to the landless beneficiaries of the union government's flagship program by december 15th will find their targets for financial year redistributed to other states this means center will withdraw the share of funds allocated to states which are not finding lands under the uh, pradhan mantri grammy navas yojana so if the states are if the states are not working properly and giving or making utilization of the grameen uh, the pradhan mantri grammy navas yojana the fund allocated to that will be redistributed to another performing very good state so uh, this means as the uh, the center will withdraw funds so what do you mean by the pm uh, this means uh, the pradhan mantri avas yojana is a central government initiative which is aimed at providing affordable housing for all by 2022 so there are two components uh, which is pradhan mantri avas yojana grameen and uh, pradhan mantri avas yojana uh, rural urban there is rural as well as urban the primary goal is to build pakka houses with basic amenities like water sanitation and electricity and the central and state government will share the cost of housing units in the 60 to 40 ratio very important for gs paper to uh, government schemes now you now use your face as boarding pass at delhi varanasi and bengaluru airport so this brings us what do you mean by you can use your face to check in so what do you mean by digi yatra that is the most important one what do you mean by digi yatra it is digi yatra is designed to achieve contactless seamless processing of travelers at airport and at many checkpoints including security areas digi yatra allows for the automatic processing of passenger data just based on the facial recognition system so a traveler must register the information on digi yatra aadhar based validation and a self picture capture to use the service it will it will actually uh, digi yatra will simplify and streamline the boarding process in the airports by facial recognition technology a very good thing for gs paper 3 aviation as well as technology gs paper 3 next is uh, international use european union's borrels uh, says a very interesting thing that russia must pay for ukraine reconstruction so russia has already damaged ukraine to a larger extent russia must definitely pay for ukraine reconstruction which is a very good idea but unfortunately we don't know whether this will be in coming or not Next is regarding debt talks in Sri Lanka put spotlight on China loans. So uh, you know that Beijing will have to play a major role in Sri Lanka's 
debt restructuring process because you know sri lanka is completely destroyed economically and it has a lot of loans liabilities for different countries and china is definitely a big country which sri lanka owes so china sri lanka owes a lot of money to china which china will have to restructure the loans and debt which sri lanka has to pay this also brings us to where is the humban tota international port it's very important where is the humban tota international port and the ifm imf international monetary fund made its support on sri lanka obtaining adequate financial assurance from all its creditors so it has uh, the largest private lenders of sri lanka is basically international sovereign bonds or isb and uh, the external debt a large chunk is the large chunk is paid by china india and japan china india and japan which are the top 3 bilateral creditors for sri lanka and the article also talks about china and the uh, mega infrastructure projects that were funded in humban tota and colomba were funded by the chinese people so there is an mp uh, the, he said that this this is not china being sri lanka's friend that is china being mahinda rajpakse's friend so that is a new that is again a different stand that sri lanka is taking that it is not only aligned to china uh, there are many other players like india and japan and imf who are supporting china so it is not only a chinese alignment alone so that is not china being sri lanka's friend that is china being mahinda rajpaksa's friend so definitely uh, the debt restructuring is an important issue and uh, the countries who have given loans should restructure the loans so that sri lanka is getting a support to pay back the money very important for gs paper 2 international relations perspective next is a uh, entire 2 to 3 uh, wheeler fleet needs around 285 billion to turn electric so complete electrification of india's entire fleet of two and three wheelers will require around 285 billion dollars according to the w world economic forum that will be a big task of making the whole thing but it is a very good initiative in gs paper 3 uh, clean energy manufacturing pmi signals output and this brings us the article of gs paper 3 economy what do you mean by pmi or purchasing managers index so it talks about purchasing managers index so pmi or purchasing manager index is basically an economic indicator derived from the monthly survey of the private sector companies so it is a survey based measures that asks the respondents about a uh, changes in their perception of some key business variables from month before so you take the survey and how they have responded in the perception of business variables and uh, it is calculated separately for the manufacturing and service sector and a composite index is constructed so definitely pmi is derived from a series of questions so definitely purchasing managers index or pmi is an economic indicator derived from the monthly survey of private sector companies and uh, it is uh, providing information regarding the current and future conditions of a business to the decision maker analyst investor so if you are an investor if you are a decision maker analyst a pmi will give you an in- indication about how the business the industry or the market is going to perform so definitely pmi is a very good indicator of business activity know it from gs paper 3 uh, economy perspective so these are some of the important news leads that we have discussed in today's newspaper so keep listening to learn stroke is classes by arjun subscribe our channel for such free videos on current affairs and do share it with your upsc aspirants thank you